Today's lesson is all about money. Hey everyone, welcome to Interactive English. My name is Wes and we are all about helping you practice and improve your English skills. And today I want to talk to you about money. This is a very important topic. Many people out there, they love money. Everybody wants money. We, we all need money in order to survive. So I want to teach you some common idioms and expressions that are all related to money. I will tell you the idiom and, and then talk about the meaning. And I'll, I'll also try to discuss how you would use this idiom. And then finally, I'll show you uh, some video clips so that you can see how the idiom or expression is used in context. Now, keep in mind, I am from the United States, so some of the idioms may be specific to the US. However, I think that, that they are very common and well known that people all over the world from other English speaking countries will likely understand these idioms and expressions as well. So the first idiom or well, it's more so it's just a word, the first word that I have for you. And this one I think is more specific to the United States is the word buck. It is an informal word and a buck is just talking about a dollar. One buck is one dollar. Now you would use this word, I think, mostly when talking about smaller amounts of money. You're not gonna hear people talk about one billion bucks. That's, you know, people would use dollars in that case. But if you're talking about a small amount of money, people may say bucks instead of dollars. Like, hey, uh, do you have a couple of bucks? Or can I borrow a few bucks? And that's how I think most people would use this word when, when they want to say a dollar. Instead, they're just gonna say a buck. Well, we gave him a few bucks. I mean, I only got a couple bucks. I made a few bucks. Okay, whatever. Look, if you're hungry, man, I can loan you a buck. It'd be worth a few bucks. Come on, Homer, I just want a quick look-see. Pay you a buck. A buck, eh? Then we have to cost an arm and a leg. And this just means that well, it just means that something is expensive. So instead of saying that, well, this, you know, th that car, well, it, it's really expensive, you could say, well, it, it cost an arm and a leg. I think people would use it when they're describing something that's expensive, but I, in a way, I think they're also saying that they don't think it's worth that much money, that it costs too much. It should not be that expensive. So when you say, well, something cost an arm and a leg, you're, you're basically saying that it's too expensive, that it should not cost this much money. But in general, it's just, it's just really expensive. These lessons, they don't cost an arm and a leg. They're, they're free. <laughs> this is an advanced computer system. It costs an arm and a leg. <laughs> cost me an arm and a leg. It's got GPS navigation, 200 watt stereo system. Question, get rid of the old sandwich vending machine in the lobby, which costs us an arm and a leg to rent and no one uses it. Then we have the expression, pony up. And if you tell someone to pony up, you're, you're just telling them to pay money and it's, it's money that they owe, that they should pay. And sometimes it may be to settle a debt. And you tell this other person like, hey, okay, you need to pony up. You need to pay some money. So this is a very, it's a very informal expression, but it's one maybe you would hear somebody use this if you're watching a TV show or a movie and somebody needs to pay money for something and the other person might say, hey, okay, you need to pony up. You need to pay your money. You need to pony up. It's a company party and you're the CEO, so pony up. No, if anyone should pay, it should be you. This thing with Bobby goes to trial. We're gonna have to pony up some serious upfront cash. What you should do is have him sponsor you for the dance. Ask the manager to pony up a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, ten dollars a dance. So if she makes it through twenty dances, you need to pony up two hundred dollars towards her class trip to DC. Then we have the expression, put your money where your mouth is. And this is one of my favorite expressions, and it just means that that it could mean a couple of things. It could mean that somebody is spending money in order to improve a bad situation, that, that someone needs to put their money where their mouth is. Or you could say uh, that, that you are telling somebody that they need to spend money so that, that you know that they mean what they say. And they're not just talking. That instead of just talking, 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 you'd say, okay, look, put your money where your mouth is. You need to spend money 
to show me that you are being serious, to, to show me that what you're saying is true. It is believable. Put your money where your mouth is. And again, I, I guess I would say that this expression doesn't always have to be talking about money and spending money. In another way, it's telling somebody to basically, well, do what you say. If you are talking and saying all these things and the other person, maybe they don't believe you, then they might say, look, okay, let's see you, let, let, put your money where your mouth is. Let's see if you do what you're saying. Put your money where your mouth is. Put your money where your mouth is. Us is you. 10 boots, five against five. You're gonna have a drink. Come up for a drink with me and see who's more of a laugh. Yeah, put your money where your mouth is. I wouldn't want to get any exhaust on that pretty face. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? Next is the idiom to make ends meet. And this just means that you are earning enough in order to live. That you're not, you're not making a lot of money and you have all this extra money lying around. If you make just enough in order to live, then you could say that you are making ends meet. Or perhaps you may hear somebody say, well, you know, we're just trying to make ends meet. We're trying to make enough in order to live, to make ends meet. Would you describe your financial circumstances? I was struggling to make ends meet. You were a waitress for six years. And I could never make ends meet. Tara and I are trying to buy a house and we're, you know, struggling to make ends meet. She'd put in the, in the um, bushels and stuff and sell it, you know, because they had to, you know, make ends meet and stuff. The next expression is to be loaded. And loaded, it's just an adjective and it's used to describe someone who has a lot of money, who is very wealthy. You could say this person is loaded. He's loaded. She's loaded. I think, uh, well, many of us out there, we'd like to be loaded because... Well, it's nice if you don't have to worry about money because there there are many of us out there just trying to make ends meet. We just want to make enough money, although it'd be nice one day to be loaded. <laughs> All right. Hey, Travis. Hey, you got that five you owe me? My man is loaded, loaded. He's loaded. Is that it? The Saperstein's are uh, Girl, loaded. Can I get the stuff we smash is worth nothing compared to that thing. These guys must be loaded. Then we have the expression to look like a million bucks. Now, first, I, I want to tell you that before I said that you don't use the word bucks when talking about a large sum of money, except, <laughs> except with this expression to look like a million bucks, or you could say to look like a million dollars. It means the same thing. But when you use this expression, you are saying that a person looks very nice, they look very elegant, and you're talking about, most of the time I think it's talking about the way they look, the way they're dressed, the way they've styled their hair, and you could say, wow, you look like a million bucks. This is a, it's a way that you can give a compliment to someone. So I think you would say this to somebody if there is a very formal event and everybody's getting dressed up and they, they come out of the room and you see them for the first time and you could say, wow, you know, you look like a million bucks. You look like a million dollars. I, I like, I love it. If somebody were to tell me, Hey Wes, you know, you look like a million bucks. It would, it would make me feel good. And right now I want to tell all of you, I have no idea what you're wearing right now, but doesn't matter. I think you, you look like a million bucks. You look like a million dollars. I just wanted to let you know. Come on. Well, you look great, okay? You look, you look great. You look like a million bucks. Yeah. Terrific, wonderful. You look great. You look like a million bucks. Man, I say you look like a million bucks. I have never been able to wear that dress because I just couldn't pull it off, and now you just look like a million bucks. Then I have a couple of phrases that mean the same thing, and that is shell out and fork over. And you can use these interchangeably, and it just means to pay for something. And you may hear somebody say, oh, you need to, you need to shell out some cash if you want to buy this thing that costs an arm and a leg, or you really, you need to fork over some money if you want to purchase this thing. Again, you can use these two phrases interchangeably, they are very informal, so I don't think you are necessarily going to use them all the time in conversational English, but try to listen for them the next time you're watching a TV show or watching a movie. To shell out, to fork over, to pay for something. He's trying to get Big Bad Dwight to shell out for a huge repair job while Lucky Jimbo gets a paid vacation. Yeah, he most certainly is. People to fork over 80 grand for that. Well, I've been on the phone all afternoon. Yeah. Had to shell out $5,000 to the Breckhoffs. 
Next is the expression rags to riches. So if you say that somebody went from rags to riches, then you are just saying that in the beginning they were very poor and then later on they became very wealthy. So you're describing a person's situation over time and you could say that they went from rags to riches or that, that they have a story that is rags to riches. They were poor and then they became rich. Rags to riches. So what is the secret of this rags to riches story? Here they come now, the rags to riches, Cinderella contenders. It's like a true rags to riches story, but I've always found the middle class to be just so much more real. Then we have the idiom bread and butter. And if you are talking about somebody's bread and butter, then you are just talking about their main source of income. And that, that would pretty much be somebody's job. And for example, I could say, well, you know, making these English lessons on YouTube, it's our bread and butter. This is the, the primary way we are, are trying to make a living. Right now we're, we're making ends meet, but hopefully maybe a lot in the future at some point we'll be loaded and it will be a story of rags to riches. I just wanna give you a quick little review because I think the more you hear these idioms and expressions being used, the more likely you are to remember their meaning. So if we're talking about bread and butter, specifically, you're talking about the, the way, what, what somebody does to make their living and to make money, their bread and butter. Restoration antiques, it's my bread and butter. I'm a scientist. My ability to think is my bread and butter. Then we have foot the bill. And to foot the bill just means to pay for something. You are paying for some bill. When I think of, of this idiom being used, I think it's often used to describe a situation in which someone else might be paying for this thing. Someone else is footing the bill. You could use it when, if talking about yourself that you're trying to pay for this, but I think quite often it's used when you're, you're referring to another person paying for this thing. So for example, maybe if uh, the, the next lesson I show up with these expensive clothes and I look like a million bucks and you think, wait a second, I know that, that these YouTube videos, this is Wes's, that's his bread and butter. He's just making ends meet right now. I wonder who's footing the bill, who's paying for those clothes because they cost an arm and a leg, Who's footing the bill? You would not have to do a thing, and Philippe will foot the bill. You got your money's worth. What? I foot the bill while you played Mother Teresa. We estimate the damage at $75, and frankly, we think it's terribly unfair that other taxpayers should foot the bill. Next is the idiom, break the bank. And to break the bank means that you are, you try to buy something that really it, it costs too much, and you cannot afford it and you could say that, well, it's going to break the bank. You will go into debt because this thing costs too much, cost an arm and a leg, you can't afford it, and it's gonna break the bank. Or maybe you're trying to tell someone that, well, hey, don't worry, I can afford this. It's not going to break the bank. So you may hear this idiom being used in either the affirmative or the negative. So in the affirmative, you'd say, well, it's gonna break the bank, we can't afford it. Or if you want to reassure someone that you can afford this thing, hey, hey don't worry, it's not gonna break the bank. But to break the bank means that you can't afford it and you will likely go into debt. Are you looking for a mattress that won't break your back or the bank? If you want to be like me, you got to make snap decisions. We're going to break the bank at the Monty Burns Casino. Then we have the word penny pincher. It is a, a compound noun because this it's talking about a person who really tries to save all their money and they they really just don't like to spend their money and you could say well yeah this person is cheap you could say he is a penny pincher or she is a penny pincher they just really want to save all their money and they don't want to spend anything a penny pincher how can you afford a maid on what i'm overpaying you oh well you see mr penny pinch i i mean the space you got me. another job on the side then we have the expression, pick up the tab or pick up the check. And they mean the same thing. And it just means to pay for a bill, to pick up the tab or pick up the check. Often I, I think of a restaurant and perhaps at the end of the meal, 
the bill comes and you might say, hey, don't worry about it. I'm going to pick up the check or I'm going to pick up the tab. I am going to pay for this bill to pick up the tab or pick up the check. I'll pick up the check. Uh, okay. You're going to pick up the tab, yes, right? Yes, that's on me. Great. Pick up the check. I have to pick up the check. Here's your little games. So there you have it. Those are some great idioms and expressions that are all related to money. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something new, let me know in the comments. I want you to write, <laughs> I want you to write, you look like a million bucks. That is a, a great way to, to end the lesson with a nice little compliment and just say, you look like a million bucks. That way I know that you learned some new idioms and expressions. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.